So welcome, welcome everyone. Everyone who is joining us um, directly via Zoom, if you're joining us via Facebook, welcome to this edition of AFS Live or Alliance for Science Live. And before we start, I would like to request our panelists to please turn on your video so that we can see whom we are speaking to. Mary, Ivan, Mpoki, I can see Grace is trying to connect. So please um, turn on your videos. Yes, Mary, you're welcome. Sorry, Grace, Thank you. you're welcome. It's nice to see you. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. Mary, we are yet to see you and Ivan and Pocky. So um, as they turn on their, yes, nice. Welcome, Mary. Um. Pocky, we are only seeing the top of your head. <laughs> Ivan, we are waiting on you. I'm already on. We need your camera on. Okay. On. So as you, as you turn on your cameras, let's just turn on our cameras for the introductions and thereafter we can turn them off if, if we are not speaking. So welcome again, everyone. Good evening and good morning, good afternoon to, to you wherever you're joining us from. Today we have, um, our webinar is going to focus on a crop that is very close to my heart, um, cooking bananas. Cooking bananas is a very important staple and cash crop in East Africa, in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. And I think a little bit about um, in Rwanda and Burundi. So we are going, today on our panel, we have, um, we have scientists, breeders, people who are working behind the scenes to ensure that, to ensure that um, these bananas improve either in yield or um, disease resistance. They're going to tell us what exactly they are doing with the bananas. And we also have um, Professor Grace Wamue who, who brings in the gender aspects. How, how, how do men and, men and women react differently, respond differently to these, um, to these bananas and what should be put into consideration by the scientists when they are breeding these bananas. So um, you're welcome, Yeten, and I would like to introduce our panel this afternoon. We have um, Ivan Kavita. Ivan, Ivan is a banana breeder at Uganda's National Banana Research Program, Kawanda. And we also have uh, Mary joining us from Kenya. Mary is a lecturer in the Department of Biochemistry microbiology and biotechnology at Kenyatta University. We have um, Mpoki Shimwale, who leads the banana research at Tari Maruku, that is in Tanzania. And we also have Grace Wamue, who is an associate professor of sociology, gender, and development studies at Kenyatta University. But there is also someone that you cannot see, and um, he's called Chris Knight. Chris is helping us with the technical aspects to ensure that you can see us and hear us for the entire, um, for the next one hour. So you're welcome. Yes, again, on my screen, Ivan is first. So I would like to ask Ivan, first of all, tell us about, um, tell us about your research. What is it that you're doing with us? Thank you very much, Patricia. Uh, like she has said, I'm called Anaita Ivan Kavita. I'm a banana breeder at the National Agricultural Research Organization uh, on the banana research program. We are, what I'm doing specifically is we are improving the local banana varieties. Uh, these varieties are inferior. They are susceptible to pests and diseases, and yet they are widely consumed in Uganda. Uh, just a brief is that Uganda is the highest consumer of bananas. So having it not in plenty is a, a risk to the food security. So we are trying to improve the, we are improving the banana varieties in Uganda for resistance to pests and diseases and also for increased yield. Uh, we, we, we are currently, we currently have some varieties on market. Uh, with the farmers, and we shall discuss more as we go on. That's what we are currently doing. 
Thank you, Ivan. Um, I've just realized that I introduced everyone apart from myself. Um, apologies for that. My name is Patricia Nanteza, and I am I am your moderator this this afternoon. So Ivan Ivan has told us that um, he is working on local banana varieties in Uganda to increase their disease resistance and increase yield. And he's also given us a very important fact that Uganda is the highest producer and consumer of cooking bananas. And this afternoon, we are only talking about cooking bananas. We are not talking about dessert. Um, Dr. Mpoki Shimwale is joining us from Tanzania. He works with Tari. But um, I have also been told that Tari in conjunction with um, IITA and NARO as recently as last month, you released um, a new banana variety called the Naritas. Yes, so Mpoki, please tell us about the Naritas. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. As, as you introduce me, my name is uh, Dr. Mpoki Shimuela. Uh, I'm coordinator of banana research in Tanzania. I'm working with Tari, uh, which is Tanzania Agriculture Research Institute. Actually, currently, I'm, I'm based in Tari Tengelu, and the previous I was in uh, Kagera region, working with Tanzania Agricultural Research Institute, Maruku. So I'm participating in this uh, breeding program uh, since, I think, it's from, from long time, I, I, it's almost 2010. So only recently, we managed to release uh, banana, four banana varieties, uh, uh, which is now called Tari Dash Ban uh, One to Four. Uh, Tari Ban One, which is uh, used to be Narita Narita Four. And by the way, uh, the word Narita is the abbreviation uh, between NARO and IATA because this uh, variety developed by IATA and NARO for a long, 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 long time. And then in 2012, uh, we started a breeding program in Tanzania where we, 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 we collaborate with IATA, NARO, and Biovasta International to evaluate this material. Uh, we are almost 27 narrators were introduced and evaluated in different matter locations here in Tanzania. And very recently, we managed to release them. And all of these varieties are high yielding, uh, tolerant to uh, pests and diseases, uh, specifically this major disease like uh, black cigatoka, and also pests like uh, uh, weevils and nematodes. So, <clears throat> uh, we may, uh, so four varieties so far we are released out of uh, 27 Naritas which were introduced. So these varieties, as I mentioned, uh, Narita 4, which we name them as the uh, Taliban, uh, Taliban 1 and uh, Narita 7. This Narita 7 was already previously released in, in Uganda. So here in Tanzania, uh, we name it uh, Taliban 2. Uh, Narita 18, we name it uh, Taliban uh, 3. And Narita uh, 23, we name it Nar Taliban 4. So all of these uh, are high yielding uh, because the yield is range between 18 ton per hectare per year to up to 40 ton per hectare per year. So that is the average. Uh, when we say we, we say the average, it means there is a fluctuation. You can find the, uh, some of the bunch goes up to uh, 70 kg per, per bunch, and the, some others they can go uh, at least to 30 or uh, to 20 kg per bunch. So, uh, so far, uh, we are working on the multiplication and the distribution of this variety to farmers. Uh, we introduce a clean uh, two genotype from Nigeria, from IIT Nigeria. Uh, all these uh, uh, introduced uh, were virus indexed and genotyped. So what we are going to multiply, we are sure that uh, the, all the material are clean, free from disease, but also a true genotype. So now we are working uh, toward uh, multiplying and distributing. And our target is at least for the first year. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mpoki. We shall, we shall get back to you. Okay, thank you. 
We shall get back to you um, and okay, you give us you. details of what okay, do you mean you. by high yielding? What are you comparing it to? But I would now, yes, okay. okay. So I would like now to give an opportunity to, to, to Mary. Mary, tell us um, what, you're, what you're working on when it comes to um, bananas in, in Kenya. Thank you very much, Patricia. Thank you, colleagues, uh, for this opportunity to converse about my favorite crop, the banana. Uh, I am, as you are told, a, a lecturer in the Department of Biotechnology at Kenyatta University. I am a, a geneticist, and I've been working on banana tissue culture for the last 20 years. Uh, not just in the lab, but transferring tissue culture technology to the, to the farmers. And this is where Grace and I meet uh, because we've worked together to, to transfer the technology, especially to women farmers in Kenya who are the majority uh, you know, uh, farmers. Uh, currently, we are engaged in a project which is called Chris Maban Project. And Christmas band starts for climate smart bananas for Africa and Europe. This project is funded by the European Union, um, uh, the European Commission on the aspects of food security, the long-term European Africa partnership for food security. It's called Lipa Agree in, in short. And it's a consortium of partners from Nara Uganda, from University of Ghent in Belgium, from the University of KU Leuven, which most of you may be familiar with, and from Liege University. And we are all undertaking different aspects of the project. For us, we are kind of building on the work Ivan and um, our colleague from Tanzania are doing, and we are glad that we are meeting you online uh, to also establish or you know uh, evaluate the narita hybrids which are the talk of town at the moment as far as cooking bananas are concerned to evaluate them in kenya and we are really happy that uh, we have been successful in um, bringing the material uh, uh, producing them in through tissue culture and evaluating them in the greenhouse in the field and now we are ready to take them to the farmers so we are following on our neighbors in Tanzania and Uganda. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Mary, for that. Grace, you're going to allow me to, to just um, keep, keep your contribution to this conversation for a little bit um, longer. So before we get to the farmers, the, because I assume that is where now you really come in. I want to go back to, to, to the scientists, the breeders and ask you to help us understand when you say high yielding, what do you mean in comparison to what? What is the yield increase that these narrators, the talk of town, just like Mary has um, described them, what is the yield increase of the narrators? And as you're giving us the yield increase, please show us the income increase that results, um, that results from the yield increase. Maybe in Poki, you, no, it started from narrow and IITA. Ivan, please, please go first. Thank you, Patricia. Uh, it should be, it should be well stated, and I'm going to bring it out well. I think uh, first and foremost, uh, like I said, banana is 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 highly cultivated in Uganda. Its production is high. Uh, actually the highest in Africa, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but when you look at the production in terms of hectare per year, uh, its product production is about, uh, its productivity is about 10, 15 tons per hectare per year. But its estimated potential, the estimated potential for banana here in Uganda uh, banana production is about 70 tons per hectare per year. So you can see that gap just in productivity in terms of tons per hectare per year. From about 10 to 70, there is a gap, a very big gap. So uh, this is where we came in. 
what is the problem? What is, why, why is there this gap? And the problems are very many. But also, uh, I, I can let people who are streaming here know that uh, in the past 10 years, banana production in Uganda alone has declined from about 10, uh, 10 metric tons, 10 million, 10 million tons to less than 5 million tons. That is in 10 years. So you can see by more than half, there is a problem. And the problem is, is the is one uh, pests and diseases, like I said. Uh, bananas are, these local bananas are affected by many pests and diseases. We have the nematodes, uh, we have the weevils, we have black cigatoka, we have banana bacteria wilt, and so on. But also, you cannot uh, skip the agronomic practices. They are poor agronomic practices that the farmers are are deploying. They are not following the right agronomic practices for banana. So this has also contributed to that yield gap. Then you also have to note that as, as bananas are well grown, uh, there is also a challenge of, of, of farmers not actually following the, the the right procedures of growing bananas. I think that also comes in the in the banana production, uh, in the agronomic mm -hmm. practices. So in this, agronomy. yeah, if you look at this, 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 also, okay, also the inferior, the East African Highland bananas, which are the local varieties, I must say they are good they are in their attributes of mostly cooking when you test, but they are, their bunches are not that big. They are not that big. So that is where the research program of banana came in to address those challenges. So we, mm -hmm. we, we came in to address the challenge of raw, low yields, and also resistance. Uh, on average, you would, you would expect to recoup uh, uh, benefits of like in Ugandan shillings, uh, that's uh, in US dollars, that's around 300. Uh, 300 US dollars, that is per season in an acre. But mm -hmm. you realize that because of the pests and diseases and the factors that I've talked about, you cannot get that, that benefit. You're actually going to get less than that. Yet the cost of investment established bananas, uh, banana fields is high. So there is that margin that we want to address. With the hybrids, what we are calling the yes, Ivan, Ivan, allow me to cut you. Ivan, allow me to cut you short. Mm. You have painted a very beautiful grim picture of what the problem is. Thank but you. now you have told us that you released the narrators and you're actually yes. taking them to farmers, both in Uganda, Tanzania, and Mary starting it in Kenya. Now, what I want us to understand, what I want from you, what I would request from you is to what is the narrator advantage? You're telling us production has dropped from 10 to 5%. Now, when a farmer adopts your new variety, what is the increase? And what particular constraint are you dealing with? Just briefly, so that we can hear from others. Uh, so we, we, we have developed the hybrids, uh, specifically, let me now talk about the Naritas. These Naritas yield four to six fold compared to the local varieties. So they are, they, they are, if for example, I just talk about the bunch weight, uh, you find a Narita weighing about 60 kilograms as compared to our local check Basil May, which is about, uh, when, 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 when taken care of very well, is about 20 kilograms. So the, the uh, production or their productivity is about uh, four to six fold. But also you have to note that they are resistant to Black Cigatoka. Black Cigatoka is a leaf disease, a fungal disease that reduces the photosynthetic area. And it contributes heavily to the reduction in the bunch, bunch yields. So they are resistant to Black Cigatoka. They are tolerant to weevils and the nematodes. And these are the key pests. So you are sure that when you adopt these new hybrids, you uh, your production is going to increase 
by five and by five five times or more, but also you are sure that you are going to have longer plantation life cycles because these these hybrids are resistant to pests and diseases. So you are going to have longer plantation cycles. What does longer mean, Ivan? What is the yes. current plantation cycle, and what uh, if when, you grow narrators? For 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 example, in the central in central Uganda, where the banana production has been heavily hit, uh, the plantation cycle is, is is about five years or below. Meaning, if you establish the plantation right now in 2021, by 2026 you will need to be replanting, which is very costly. Yet, if you planted the naritas, it would take you around 20 years for you to. To, to establish a new field. That is keeping other factors constant, keeping your agronomic practices very well. Yes? I'm, Ivan, I'm losing yes, you. Uh, um, can you get me now? But, um, yes. So just tell us the plantation life of, of, of a plantation that is that has narrators on it. I didn't get that. Uh, I, I say the plantation life cycle of the narrators mm -hmm. is about 20 years. Because they are oh, about 20 years. Time. Thank you very yes. much, Ivan. Um, what we've understood from what you said is that there is, when we talk about size, from local varieties in comparison to Narita, someone who, who grows um, Narita's, you're getting an almost 50 kilogram increase in terms of batch size from True. maybe, and that is the local variety and the one growing um, the Narita's will get like maybe 40 or 50 kilograms. You've told us yes. the Narita's are resistant to black cigatoka, which is a yeah. disease that affects the leaves, to yes. nematodes and weevils. Yes. So that is increased production. And I am going to assume that since these are the same varieties that are being adopted in Tanzania and Kenya, we are going to see relatively the same increases and the same disease resistance. Disease resistance. So as I move to Mpoki, um, I would like for you to share with us um, your increasing production um, fourfold, sixfold. But the price of a banana cannot, the, the price of a banana bunch cannot exceed a certain price. Okay. I, I, I come from Kampala. So allow me to use Uganda shillings for, for comparison purposes. Bananas only go as far as 40,000 shillings during Christmas because it is Christmas. But otherwise, ordinarily, it is between 20 to 25. There is no way anyone is going to buy a banana batch at 50,000, okay? So there is a ceiling to how much a banana batch, however big it can go. And then you're introducing big batches to farmers and yet there is a price ceiling. How is this? Okay, now this is my actual question. Is yeah. there really an income advantage to the farmers? If all you're giving them at the end of the day is a bigger bunch, how is this manifesting in Tanzania? Yeah, actually, thank thank you. Uh, in Tanzania, actually, since, since the, this variety is just like a, a recently released in January, uh, so the mm -hmm. impact assessment of this uh, variety is not yet done. But uh, based on the experience, I can answer you that. Uh, uh, the first, uh, first and foremost objective is uh, to make sure that food security are stable, that farmers are food secure. That is our prime uh, objective. And the surplus, a uh, farm have to sell. So uh, ecological uh, Tanzania uh, as a country is uh, so diverse. Uh, there is some of the region where they have a disadvantage. Uh, for instance, when we, uh, we mentioned about Kagera region, which is border to Uganda and border to Rwanda and Burundi, all these countries are, are banana, are good banana uh, producers. So 
uh, usual uh, for Kagera region uh, during the peak is true the banana uh, price uh, goes down. For instance, uh, we had the project uh, called Banana Agronomy Project, uh, which aimed to improve uh, productivity of this local local East African Highland banana. Uh, when we started the, the project, uh, the yield was so, so down. Uh, actually, during the baseline, uh, the average yield was less than five uh, ton per hectare per year. But now we managed to move the productivity up to uh, 30 uh, ton per hectare per year. So this uh, season, we experienced a flood of banana in the Bukoba market and even in, in Mwanza, which is nearby seat from Bukoba. So uh, uh, now, uh, based on this experience, it's true that a uh, banana uh, is goes down during the peak, but uh, during uh, off season, because when you're talking about the Christmas, Christmas also is uh, somehow banana uh, production is, is, is down because that is all is uh, because of, uh, that is time when we are just moving from the uh, low uh, from this uh, uh, low rainfall uh, toward the high rainfall season during the uh, April March because April March that is the one which causing the uh, flood of ma of banana market during uh, May June and July. But during December, usual banana is uh, decreased because of production. That's why the cost is going up. Uh, but in other region, in other major producing region like Mbeya and Kilimanjaro, we have uh, an added advantage of the bordering cant. For instance, in, in Kilimanjaro, uh, there's hundreds of uh, rory moving toward Kenya, uh, 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 moving banana. But also in Mbeya, we have the advantage of the border to uh, Malawi and the Zambia. They don't produce banana, but they eat a lot of banana also. So in Mbeya, there's no problem with oh. market because, yeah. So the only problem is in Kagera region, but also now because the road network uh, between Kagera and Dar es Salaam is good, but also it's too far because moving road from Kagera to Dar es Salaam is 30 hours drive. So you can see that some, sometimes banana is can ripe in between. So in terms of yes. price, in terms of price for Narita, the impact assessment not yet done. But now at least yes. I can say that we are sure that farmer, uh, there will be food secure for a long time because as Ivan mentioned, uh, production mm -hmm. sake of Narita is, is higher than compared to this local. And also, uh, there is some other thing which uh, maybe Ivan uh, didn't mention. It's about mud disappearance, which is also uh, going hand in hand with the uh, plantation cycle. Mud disappearance in Narita is is, uh, is is low, so farmers they can stay with this with this banana for a long time in their plantation because we know that a banana farmer traditional they are very difficult. It's very difficult to, to take some of these cutvers. Uh, for instance, uh, they just keep it in their farm, in their plantation, even if they are low yielding, as long as they have some cultural value in it, they can still keep it. But we are sure that okay. this narrator, they can bring something to farmers. Yes, thank you Mpoki. Um, it was exciting to hear you saying that um, even though production increases and there is a surplus on the local market, there are, there are other avenues for export. Farmers can either take it down to Malawi, take it, bring it over here to, to Kenya. So um, that is a good, um, a good showcase of how income can increase, not necessarily from um, the farmers' domestic markets. Now, Mary, over to you. Um, you're just testing the narrators in Kenya. Uganda has given us their example. They've just been released in um, in Tanzania. Same good story, same resistance, same in increase in yield. But Mpoki said something good about resistance to adopting new varieties. What is your strategy in Kenya? 
because I'm also sure Kenyan banana farmers are going to behave the same way like the ones in Tanzania, the ones in Uganda, they will resist because they have cultural attachments. So how do you, do you have any measures in place to ensure that um, these narrators are uptaken in, in Kenya with all their advantages? Mary, we, over to you. Thank you, Patricia, and thank you, colleagues, uh, for the insights. Uh, we are in Kenya. We are obviously benchmarking the successes in Tanzania and Uganda. Uh, but what we are doing in our case, especially through the Christmas Ban project, is adopted a participatory approach where we started engaging with the farmers right from the beginning of the project. And uh, we have had discussions with them. We have um, given them all this information about the advantages of the narrators. We have also uh, been organizing visits to our laboratory where the farmers come and see exactly what the, we are doing and observe the plants both in the, in the lab, in the greenhouse, and in the farm. So we have tried our best to have a buy-in from the beginning. Uh, and in this case, it's not just the farmers. We have involved all the stakeholders in the banana value chain. That is the farmers, the extension officers, the researchers, the county governments, and also people who are involved in marketing, and in value addition. Um, given that production in Kenya is dismal, as you're hearing, the, the you know, lorries and trucks are always coming from Uganda and Tanzania into Kenya. Uh, we, 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 we are more than confident that our farmers are really looking forward to getting these new hybrids that are uh, promising higher yields. And in this case of Kenya, uh, uh, I dare say that Kenya is really, uh, banana is not a staple food, but there's uh, they, they, a lot of interest now in terms of diversifying our diets. And also there is a lot of interest when the farmers in Kenya here, they are going to make more money from the bananas, especially the cooking bananas. And we, we have information that there is market open in Korea you know, for the cooking bananas. So the, the farmers are looking forward to, you know, to the, to the you know, already the government has entered a contract with Korea and we are not able to give them, you know, enough uh, cooking bananas. So this is incentive enough for the farmers to want to adopt. Actually, they are really pushing us. So I would say it is the participatory approach and the, the wide stakeholder engagement. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mary. I can see um I can see an export outlook when it comes to to increase in production. We are not just looking at the local markets, we are looking at regional, we are looking at continental, and that is good. Um Mary, sorry, Grace, over to you. We haven't heard from you up until now because we wanted to finish the lab and the field and get to you because um you bring in the social you, you bring in the social aspect the gender aspect in this um, conversation of breeding better bananas for africa so grace tell us what is it that you do in this value chain okay thank you so much patricia and the rest of the team the participants i'm excited uh, to be working with scientists and i think i want to start with an equation because I think you people are more used to equations than anything else. I have heard a lot of you talk about high yields and more income, bigger bunches and all that. Indeed, the idea of new varieties is to improve production and production means money and money also means power. So the, the end result, if I may take that equation, it means high yields through farmers and then to better lives. That is all what scientists are thinking about and that is what exactly they are doing. But I want to bring a factor within the equation called farmers. And I think all of you have kept consistently talking about our farmers, farmers, farmers. And I want to say that farmers in the first place are made of a category of men and women, gendered categories of men and women. 
And this is where, uh, where I come in because when you take the, the high yields or better yielding varieties to this category of farmers, I come in and let you know that the farmers per se do not exist as in a vacuum. Men and women are different. They exist in very different power dynamics and the banana higher yields <coughs> brings in new power shifts because of the manufacturer. So my role is, or let me just briefly say what has happened before. New varieties of bananas or new varieties of crops is not news in the country. There could be other varieties, including desert bananas, which were introduced in the country and they changed the terrain from the raw production to the very high production. If you are blind that you don't realize the power shifts, which brings money to the farmers, the so-called farmers, the end results become negative outcomes instead of positive outcomes. Why is it negative outcomes? The power shift because of the money brings in new roles. For example, you have talked of a bigger bunch. Bigger bunches means men and women may respond differently to even handling that bananas, even taking them to the markets and all this. And what happens now because of the power shift and dynamics Within the household, within the communities, the negative outcomes, one is more labor, sometimes which adds to women, uh, difference in marketing or shift in marketing because these bananas may, not, may have to be taken to the market, maybe through machinery, bicycles, motorcycles, vehicles, etc. And finally, the distribution of wealth that is accrued from the new varieties, which sometimes brings sexual and gender-based violence in the families because people start fighting for new money. Bananas are traditionally in our country, a, wo a woman's crop. But the minute they start yielding higher varieties, they become men's crop. So there is that competition that comes in and that is what I try to address. So I work with the scientists like Mary to try and sensitize the farmers about this power dynamics and what we can do about them. Thank you. So Grace, um, I want to remain with you for just a, for just um, a few more minutes. Let's take a real example, just like you've given us. There is an increase in yield, bigger bunches, and new money, okay? And yeah. then the power dy dynamics change because then the man in the household becomes um, more responsible, deciding deciding um, he's, he's the one who has the energy anyway, or the bicycle to take um, the bunch to the market. So there is a negative, what did you call it? Um, negative there is, um, outcome. Yes, there is a negative outcome there. How do you deal with it? When you say sensitization, give us a real example. What exactly do you do in order to avert this negative outcome? Okay, thank you so much. But what you have heard me say is we use a participatory approach before the bananas are even taken to the lab, we are cognizant of these gendered categories. So when you heard her say that we involve the farmers, for us farmers is a, a gender bright fad, word. We take into consideration about men and women. We put them together into groups and most, mostly we prefer even people living in a household, men and women or husband and wife, we take them through agenda training, showing them what it means, how power dynamics, you know, emanates within the household, what it is. Some of them are not even conscious about it. They just see fightings and all this, and they are not aware. So we show them how that, that this power, how it is distributes itself and how you can circumvent it. For example, one key thing that I do in the training is even how to negotiate, the power of negotiation, how to speak, how should a husband speak to a, to a wife about, you know, money? How do you define money? How do you yeah, use yeah. money within a household? That is, it, is, it takes in, in, in rigorous training uh, and people discussing together, men and women coming together within a boardroom, within a farm, and they discuss together some of these fears and all this. And at the end of it all, we make them take action plans, individualized action plans on what they can do for gender integration, including sharing roles in the household, sharing roles in the farms, and sharing resources and sharing wealth. 
Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you, Grace. You've answered someone's question who was asking that um, what exactly is a negative outcome? You have showed us some um, fights that could be unexplainable. Um, couples start fighting when they don't know that it's over the money. Um, you have show you, you told us actually the, the increase in labor because of the branches. Um, and then you have showed us clearly how you work with communities to ensure that um, this negative outcome is, is averted. But it is a good problem to have a money problem than a hunger problem. So we want to say thank you to the scientists, to Ivan, Pocky, and Mary, and all the partnerships that represent EU, IITA, NARO, TARI, everyone, Ke you know, Kenyatta University. Thank you because you are helping us deal with the hunger problem and you are without intending creating um, a money problem, which Mary then comes in to also solve. So um, this is, the, the, this is um, a very exciting webinar because there are problems here being solved, new problems being created and being um, solved at the same time. So at this moment, we just have um, a few minutes remaining and I would like to open this up to our participants in, on Zoom. If you have any question, please type it in the Q&A. Um, from Facebook, I think um, Chris is monitoring Facebook. We shall pick any questions from there. But there are two questions in the chat that I would like to read out and open up to any of our participants. Um, this is Ivan who mentioned um, the loss of production in Uganda over the last 10 years. You said production has, in, has decreased from 10 tons per hectare to five. And Chris is asking that loss in production, has it happened under the same cultivation area or it's because um, farmers have reduced the cultivation area? Please be brief in your answers so that we can take more questions and hear from more from other people on the panel. Thank you, Patricia. This is two way. First, uh, the, the reduction in production was on the same area because uh, a, a, bunch that, a, a bunch that was weighing 10 kilograms or 20 kilograms after the, the effect of the disease or the pest, it reduced to less than 10. So there was that reduction. Uh, production per area reduced because of the pests and diseases. But also when that came in, because the, the, the farmers could not keep the pests at which the plantations were being ravaged, and like I said, establishing a banana plantation is a bit expensive. So you would want it to be long lasting so that you can recoup as much profit as possible. So having to plant every after three, four years became too expensive. So some farmers abandoned banana growing and they replaced with other crops, which are somehow annual. And this, this led to in the reduction in the production area in mostly in the central region of Uganda and other parts of the country. Okay, it is both ways. Um, the second question is, um, let me see. Um, so many countries are facing similar challenges, just like we have East Africa, the original East Africa um, represented here. East Africa has become wider. Sudan has joined us, Rwanda, I, Burundi. So the original East Africa is represented on this panel and we all are facing the same challenges. What is the extent of international collaboration in banana breeding? And how varied are the cultural needs and preferences from country to country and community to community? Maybe the question to answer here is how varied are the cultural preferences? If Narita is released in Uganda, um, what is it that Ugandan consumers want from their banana? Is it the same as Tanzanian consumers? Is it the same? As, as Kenyan producers. But when it comes to international collaboration, I think this is very clear. We have um, scientists from across the board. We have Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda represented, and even um, the gender specialists are on board. This, this has, the narrators have been bred and released in, in collaboration with IITA. Um, Mary talked about EU and um, it's called the Alliance for Bioversity Bio and, and SEAT. So we see international collaboration represented well. Mpoki, what is it that um, consumers in Tanzania want? What, what do they want from their banana? And Mary, you'll tell us what Kenyan consumers want from their banana, briefly again. 
Yeah, okay, thank you for, thank you for this. Uh, actually, uh, in Tanzania, uh, when we, we, we talk about banana and consumer, uh, consumer preference in Tanzania is just white uh, because we depend on the agroecological zone and the, as well as Kachwa. Uh, for instance, when you talk about the area of northern, east, east, eastern zone, uh, area of Kilimanjaro in the Arusha, uh, where Mchare is the leading uh, uh, banana uh, uh, which is consumed in, in most of the, by, by most of the, of, of the people in these areas. And while in, in the Kagera region, uh, the higher people, these, they like this softy uh, banana, which is matoke. Uh, in Mbea is a mixed, they like plantains, uh, as well as this soft banana. So in terms of consumer preference uh, in Tanzania, we are not, uh, we are not like a uh, well uh, uh, depend on one type of banana. We depend from variety, uh, diverse. Uh, yes, Mpoki, I understand. But today we are talking about cooking bananas. What do yes. your consumers want from cooking bananas? You talked about soft, so they want them soft. Are they obsessed with color like we are in Uganda? We want our bananas deep, deep yellow. Yes, yeah, exactly. That's what I mentioned. That consumer preference in, in Tanzania is depend on the agroecological. And as I mentioned, Mshare is a mostly a consumed banana, most cooked consumed banana in Kilimanjaro and Arusha. These are the reading, is one of the major banana producers in the country. In Kagera, those are the similar culture like in Uganda. They prefer soft like, and yellow banana. And in Mbea, also they prefer uh, a medium, actually soft and yellow banana, also preferred in Mbea. But uh, don't forget that now uh, urbanization is very big. Uh, there's a lot of hire and other people in Dar es Salaam where there's a, a big market for banana. And also there's in other big cities like Dodoma and Mwanza. So consumer preference, uh, we don't have any, uh, uh, it's just like it's not like in Uganda where there's this uh, uh, preference like a softness texture because in Uganda you use this mashed banana, but in Tanzania the mashed banana is in small portion of Kagera region, specifically in Karagwe and in Bukoba, but in other areas they prefer, which is uh, the similar in, 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 in Uganda called Katogo. Oh, okay. yes, 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 that is the most the fried, yeah, the yeah. fried, they, they want, they want their bananas fried. So there is, um, there is a lot, the, the, there is a lot less, um, demand on particular attributes. We, we can, we can safely say that in Tanzania, people just want their bananas. They are cooking yes. bananas to yes. eat them. Yes. yes. For, yeah, um, Mary. Yeah, sorry. For, so, let, sorry, let Poki, finish. please finish your thought. So, Go ahead. It, it, yeah, as I mentioned that in the, in the Kagera region, they prefer soft banana for cooking, like in Uganda. In Kilimanjaro and Arusha, they prefer mshare. Mshare is a little bit harder. But mm -hmm. for soft banana, they use it to prepare mtori. I don't know if you hear about that kind of food. It's a special food mm -hmm. here, which is very consumed by Chaga and other people here in Arusha. So soft okay. banana is well consumed and the demand is very high and well preferred across the country. That's what I can mention. Okay, thank you Mpoki. Mary, when it comes to the Kenyan consumer, what do they demand from their banana and is the narrator providing that? Please briefly, we have nine minutes. Yes, yes, okay. Uh, as I said, we are coming behind our colleagues in Uganda and Tanzania. So we have really not done the, the specific tests, but okay. preliminary information from our discussions with the farmers and the consumers is that taste is a major driver, cooking qualities, and for the farmers, resistance to diseases. Uh, but again, Grace will tell you that <coughs> the answer depends on whether you are talking to a, a woman or a man. Because when it comes to the cooking qualities, it's the women that talk about that. When it comes to the, the size of the bunch, which is a big thing in Kenya because they are looking at the money issue, 
it is the men who talk about the, the size of the bunches. So if you give us an opportunity, maybe in future to give a, a, another a webinar, maybe we can give you more concrete, you know, evidence-based information on this, because we are just now planning on, uh, on, um, on, uh, on the testing, the, te the, the sensory okay. evaluations of the narrators. Okay, yes. thank you, Mary. We, we understand Kenya is just starting this. And when you have the data, even mm -hmm. Poki said they are yet to collect the data, we would love to have mm -hmm. you back on AFS Live and we talk about um, what you have found. But Mary, yeah. um, why, sorry, Grace, why is it that, um, okay, I, I understand that it's because the women who cook, so they would be concerned about the cooking qualities, but you mean women don't want money, so, they are, they, they are not necessarily, they won't, they won't prefer a high yielding banana variety. Women, women farmers don't want money. Women want money, but as, as I told you earlier, the power dynamics, as they want money, the control of money is mostly with the men. So men will think about money and control the money. Women, before they think of money, they'll first think about the food. So there is also that perception because of the different gender roles. And now that is the gap we are trying to bridge that everybody thinks about food and money at the same time because both are very important. Yes, the, 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 the work you're doing is very important. Um, if, if, if women are interested in, in earning more, more of an income, but it's just the control that is stopping them from doing that, so the work that you're doing to ensure that both men and women think about um, food and income in equal proportions is, is work that should be uploaded. So um, just a few more minutes before we close, um, I would like to hear from Mary briefly. You said you're a geneticist. Does that mean that um, you're using biotechnology or what we call GMOs in, in bananas? And are you going to introduce GMOs to Kenyan farmers? Yes, I am a geneticist and uh, uh, I, I, I believe that uh, genetic engineering has a big role to play in as far as the improvement of cooking bananas is concerned, especially when we are thinking about uh, the problem areas like the, you know, susceptibility to diseases, nematodes and things like that. And also when we think about maybe breeding for higher nutrition like the vitamin A. But in this particular project, we are simply uh, evaluating uh, conventionally bred bananas. But my message to, the, to us and the public is that this, the, the traditional methods of breeding and the genetic engineering methods of breeding are complementary. Because when we think about, for example, the Narita 4, which is now, you know, has been uh, shown to be superior, supposing we could now further, you know, improve Narita 4 to also contain vitamin A, you know, you can see what I mean, that the, the two approaches are complementary. And uh, we are also assuring our farmers that they, sh they should not fear genetic engineering, you know, it is here to, to offer a solution. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary. I will take that to be your closing remarks that um, yes. the narrators are not GMOs. Narrators are a hybrid. They are a product of conventional or traditional breeding methods. But Mary yes. is telling us that um, conventional breeding and genetic engineering are complementary. They work with each other and not against each other to improve on what is existing. Um, Ivan, I'll start with you. Your, your closing remarks, but I want you to drive your closing remarks to the consumer, not the farmers, because in Uganda, you've told us you've done a bit of work on the, on the farmer, but now me, the consumer, who wants my traditional pologoma, convince me to eat Narita. Thank Why you, should I even eat or buy it? Yes. Thank you, Patricia. Mm -hmm. uh, first, I want to first tell you that First and foremost, that most of the farmers are the consumers. Oh, they they, they yes. consume what they produce. Mm. But then again, like in Poki stated, there is high, high market in urban centers because of the urban rural migration. Uh, rural urban migration, we have 
so many people in, in, in urban areas and they have to eat. So why should you eat uh, Narita food? We, we have already tested these Naritas for their sensory attributes in Uganda. And their acceptability in terms of taste, uh, color, uh, the softness, softness and the aroma is 90% as compared to the local varieties. So ideally, you, what you have in, in Narita 4, you have it in Imporogoma. What you have in Imporogoma, you have it in Narita 4. The advantage of Narita 4 is while you're going to have uh, a bunch of, of, of five clusters of Imporogoma, yeah, you will have a bunch of 20 clusters. So if you have a bigger family, that bunch is going to last longer. So I would tell you to take the Narita form. Thank you, Ivan. Um, those of you who are joining us from, from Uganda, you have heard the advantages of the Naritas. They are exactly, they are like your indigenous varieties, only bigger, okay? So they can take you a longer time. There is more food on your table for your family. Mpoki, your, your final remarks. Please um, address your final remarks to whoever you want, whether your funder, farmer, consumer, your choice. Mpoki, you're, you're muted. Please unmute yourself. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Actually, for, 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 for us in Tanzania, we are still working uh, towards establishing a breeding program in banana. And uh, soon, uh, Mshari hybrid, which is a resistance to folk, uh, will be out. And this is to increase uh, uh, consumer, uh, brief, uh, consumer di uh, banana diversity, and also to increase uh, farmer selection uh, to put on the table. So, uh, uh, market location evaluation of Naroban is going on and soon more variety will be released in Tanzania uh, in, this, uh, new pro in this ongoing project of accelerated uh, breeding better banana. So more banana is coming uh, out in Tanzania and also a uh, new Mshare hybrid uh, soon will be released. So this is uh, a very good news uh, for banana farmer, not only in Tanzania, but in, uh, across East Africa and uh, towards the Central Africa in Uganda and Malawi. Okay, thank you, Poki, for, for, for you. I, I would summarize your last, um, your last message as excitement. Be excited. Something new is coming, something better, um, and it's called Naroban or Narita. Um, Grace, your, your final remarks to those men and women farmers. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. I first of all would want to address the scientists. Work with us for better equations, for better lives. Do not spend so much time in the lab and yet you take food or you think of food and then you end up with wars in the families. To men and women who are banana farmers in the adoption, we are talking about gender responsive adoption of new bananas and plantain varieties in the country. Together we can make it. And if we don't work together, there will be no Yields, I think that it will be very negative and I am not for negative outcomes. I want peace in the families yeah, with the food, with the happiness, with everything. Gender equality is not about war. It's about complementarity, who can do better, who can think better, bringing all that to the table. And with all that, we can make better families and better communities and a better region and a better world. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. Better families, better communities, money, more money that is shared between men and women. Thank you yes. very much to our panelists, Ivan Kavita from Naro, Uganda, Grace um, from Kenya, our, our gender specialist, Mary from Kenyatta University, and Poki from Tari. But there are also our partners who are not represented here. IITA, EU, and um, Alliance for Biodiversity and SEAT. Thank you very much. Um, to Chris, who has been helping us with our technical aspect of this webinar. Chris, as always, thank you very much. This has been Alliance for Science Live or AFS Live. Um, 
this recording is going to be, it will be uploaded onto our, onto our YouTube page. So please subscribe to the Alliance for Science YouTube page. You're going to find this, this recording and several other recordings and even the, the webinars we shall have in future. And also please, we request that you make it a point to pass by our website and click join, join the Alliance, become an ally for science. But now Grace, we also need more of you gender specialists. The Alliance is about improved livelihoods, improved incomes. We'd never thought that when more money comes into the family, it may end up bringing more fights. Whoa. So Grace, please join the Alliance so that we can also have your voice um, in the equation of science. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you very Thank much. You. And everyone who has joined us online, Zoom, Facebook, see you on our next Alliance for Science, AFS, I'm sorry, AFS live session. Thank you very much and bye from me.